What's up boys and girls? So today I'm gonna show you guys how to bleed coolant system on the rear mount radiator and Chevy engines. Chevy, this is a LS. L uh, it's it's a 6.0 LS. I think it's a truck motor or something like that. Uh, stock bottom end with a 91 millimeter single turbo. And air to water intercooler. And I have a radiator in the back because we don't have any space to put the radiator in the front. So we mounted under the, the under the car up here, and it's really difficult to bleed the coolant system like this with this kind of system. I it took me so long to, to figure out, but I finally got it. So much time. So what you gotta do is you, you have to open this cap right here, and then pour the radiator in the front, and make sure your um, reservoir tank, the coolant coolant tank, make sure your tank. It's higher than everything. It's make sure it's higher than the front um, steam system, H higher than that piece right there, um, the the LS1 um, water water pump. This is the LS1 water pump, and make sure your tank is higher than all those. You fill up the water, and you watch the cap. You open the cap here, and as soon as the coolant starts flowing, you close the cap here. Next step is. You gotta have your laptop on and watch your temperature gauge. Or if you have it inside, you watch it inside. I got a laptop. I'm on Holly Terminator X Max CU, so I got a laptop plugged in right here. It's charging right now. What I do next is I use this one here. And I know some people are scared to do this, but it's the only way to bleed this coolant system. Otherwise, I could not bleed it no matter what I tried. You fill it with coolant, you start the car, and you go, and go like this. And you keep doing this with the car running. The coolant will start going up, and uh, um, bubbles will start coming out more. You shut the car down when it gets kind of high. You let it go down, and then you wait some more. Then you keep doing this about three or four times, and basically, what you're doing this one is you're opening the thermostat because the thermostat has air pocket inside. Usually, they have air pocket right there. Always, always has an air pocket right here. And the thermostat does not open up because it's a cold water. It doesn't know that. When you heat it up, you open it. You make it open like manually, basically. My dad, he uses hot water to pour on it, but he never, I don't think it's going to work as good for, as this one. Make sure you don't go close to the pipes. And make sure your your the the fire is not too big, but you just keep going in there only on the edge. Nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna manually open the thermostat and you're gonna bleed the coolant system like this. There's no other way to do it pretty much. I I freaking lost so much time, money, and that was the only way to do it. Also, when you bleed the coolant system, make sure both of your pipes are hot. When you start seeing your pipes are hot, that's where you gotta get a little bit happier. Then do it for another like one more one or two more times and then just close the cap close the cap after you're done tighten it out and then you turn it on and watch your gauge again and make sure it doesn't go over 25 205 and like 210 sometimes people have a problem with the rear mount radiator is that they don't have a big enough radiator or the, the fans are not big enough i have two spall fans uh, 12 inch spall fans also forgot to tell you guys real quick uh pause the video uh you have to rev the car uh a little bit because sometimes an idle it idles too low and the ls1 mechanical pump uh, feels like it doesn't work but when you rev it that you can see the temperature going going down um just just if you can't if you can't bleed it you gotta go like this just rev it a little bit check if the temperature going down you know you're good to go like this
and they suck a lot of air. Even like that, when I'm driving on a dusty road, a lot of dust is coming out. That's, that's when you know you have a really good mount, a really good fans. That's it guys, kind of simple, but kind of hard at the same time. It took me forever to do it. By the way, we made a thousand wheel horsepower on this engine right here, and I messed up. I, I took, attached something in the hose right there, and a little bit of coolant leaked. I knew there's air in there, so I took it all apart, tightened it down real good, refilled it, and I'm doing the bleeding system. It's good now, both pipes are hot. That's when you know you're good to go. All right, guys, subscribe and comment. Like and comment, and if you want to subscribe, that will help me so much to get more people to watch this video and help a lot more people because a lot of people are having problems with building this cooling system. It took us like so long to get to this uh, like level and finding out how to do this. Like I think a month and a half or something. I, I really do, can't even tell you because we changed the radiator one time. We freaking had a small one, two small one. Uh, it was on the front, then we put it at the back. This time it took us so long to freaking find how to bleed it and now finally happen. This is like an old school kind of way to do it, somewhat. Um, but not, not many people mount rear mount r radiators until now. And if you're a drift car, it's gonna be hard for you to cool down. Make sure you got airflow underneath for the radiator. Check it out how it is underneath. All right guys, see you later, I'm out. We got 325 white tires in here, by the way.